Beautiful, beautiful oh. try. And he's April away. What a try. Two proud schools draw the curtain on their rugby season. This afternoon, as Tigerberg travel to Brackenfell in what is the final fixture of the 2018 FNB Classic Clashes series. FNB takes players from grassroots to greatness, and today we are most certainly at the grassroots at this young derby, just 10 years of age. So young because both of these schools used to play other opposition, but over time those fixtures became uncompetitive, and these two star-crossed educational institutions then chose each other to be their final destination on their rugby calendar. And what a choice that has proven to be. Plainly, the weather conditions are inclement this afternoon, although there was rain earlier, so it does look brighter than it previously did. Breckenfell is a school which provided us with the likes of Chetlin Colby and Courtney Skosan, two of the most explosive players to come out of South Africa in at least the last decade, in my humble opinion. And here is Tigerberg, a school that gave us Eben Etzebeth, Justin Gedult, and Joano Augustus, who will without a doubt be taken to the Newlands Park in a few hours this afternoon. So two proud histories, especially so the recent histories. Over the course of this derby, the nine that have been played, Tigerberg have won six and Breckenfell three. However, Tigerberg got on their winning run early on and Breckenfell have won the last two fixtures. And winning the last one by 58 points to nil. And here is the Tigerberg starting lineup. Do keep an eye on Tandile Hoy, vice captain of the side who was in the Western Province Academy side in 2017. And this year is involved in the extended Western Province under 19 squad. Also their captain, Edja de Mayer, was in the Academy week of 2018. And taking a look at Breckenfell, the number 10 and 11 are to be watched out for. Raven Smith has been with the Western Province Union since the age of under 12 and all the way through. And Mark Hune Titus was on the wing for the Craven Week side for Western Province this year, and he scored at least one humdinger of a try. This is the Tigerberg side making their way out onto Breckenfell's fields. Clad in their green and gold, the younger teams play in white jerseys with green and gold stripes. The captain, Edja de Mayer, according to me, will be in the number seven jersey today. And that is their number eight on screen. The stands are packed with fans and pupils of the schools, and Breckenfell are making their way onto the park. What an occasion we have on our hands today, a derby day indeed. The festivities have been going on since Monday where it started with golf. There's been Xbox, there's been old boys and old girls, rugby and hockey. There's been chess, there've been big brags on Thursday and Friday, catching the players and having fun singing with schools together. And today we have the most experienced schoolboy referee in the land, Jonathan Kaplan, with the whistle. Alongside me in the commentary yeah, booth today, is a priceless personal mentor of mine but more importantly, an individual who took what can only be described as the match-winning figures of six wickets for 32 runs in the final of the Gillette Cup of 1976 at the Wanderers Stadium as Eastern Province overcame Western Province. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Gavin Calvi. Gavin, we've got a derby on our hands today, but if you'd like to take some time to gloat, I'm sure we'd all understand. Oh, I think you've got a very good memory, uh, if nothing else, yeah. uh, that which uh, has got nothing to do with your youthful age. You've obviously read that somewhere, haven't you? <laughs> absolutely, Gavin, absolutely. <laughs> or I'm a time traveler. <laughs> Isn't this just a wonderful occasion once again, Paul? You know, just to show that schools rugby in South Africa is very much alive. You've, you've outlined the wonderful build-up that we've had during the course of the week. And now in this filthy weather, we've got a situation here yeah, where Brackenfield have got the wind at their back. And I'm pretty sure both teams would have given, their coaches would have given some thought to how they actually play this game, given the conditions. Uh, Brackenfield really, with the wind at their back, will want to get points on the board. Kickoff is from Breckenfeld, and it's Raven Smith with the responsibilities. Taken in on the touchline by who I have down as HD Stamet. But we will sort out our team sheets shortly. What's more important is the line out to Breckenfeld early on. No, no, get across. Get across. Well, the, the captain get of uh, the Tigerberg team, of course, also he's a deputy head boy. So he's a guy with great leadership potential and playing into the wind, there's lots of work for them to do. Shaw Pretorius, captain of Brackenfell, throws into the line out. They hold their jumper up briefly to make sure that they can set a good ruck. And what an opening this is for Brackenfell. Good start, clean passing, and Jade Lee Andreas takes it in the midfield. Setting the ruck. 
Drakenfell starting on the front foot, cleared by Jordan in the nine jersey for the young men in the yellow and blue today. Right there. Pass from Jordan. Jordan again. Haven Smith cannot handle Tigerberg flooding through, trying to make some problems here for Brackenfell. Flooding over the breakdown. Turnover ball for Tigerberg, driving up towards the halfway line now. Showing that defense is the best form of attack at times, and in the end, it will be a scrum down awarded by Jonathan Kaplan to Brackenfell. Well, some really good rucking there from Tigerberg. Unfortunately, they've given up the position. They got themselves into a good position. Just have a look at this. Over the ball they went, which made sure that they could secure it. And then one of the great difficult situations you have on a wet day in a muddy field is that ball uh, not being able to be released. Okay. And it was use it okay. or lose it, said uh, Jonathan Kaplan. Feed from Brackenfell, that scrum twisting and turning, the pick up from the bases from Mundy, powering his way forward across the game line. Brackenfell controlling position, on with a very strong wind at their back, blowing from corner to corner of the field towards the TV screen. Sending it back is Jordan, they're going to use the wind here. Raven Smith leaning one into the corner, using the wind perfectly and driving Tigerberg backwards. You spoke about him a little bit earlier, the man in picture there, Raven Smith. Just uh, so much good quality, having played provincial rugby since he was 12 years of age. And again, you can see tactically, the wind is slightly across the field towards the corner that we just saw there now. And uh, throwing in the line out, they went middle of the line out last time. It's really important that they don't try and throw it to the back, given this wind situation. Oakley Conyers with the three jersey on, throwing into the line out as quickly as possible, but the power of the wind on display there, shooting the ball back towards their own try line and a scrum down to Brackenfell. It's so important to use uh, your what we call the banker ball, the ball in the front of the line out to your first jumper on a windy day like today. Really, it's not a great attacking option, but it's a security option. At this point, Gavin, they can almost just hurl it into the front of the lineup without lifters, like the old days. Crouch. Can you just keep crouching? Slight advantage to break and fell. Attack waits there. But it is certainly all about technique, especially at schoolboy level. You can only drive 1.5 meters, so in order to secure a tight head, it's all about that early drive and strike. Lovely little chat there from Jonathan Kaplan to Adelia Hoy, just to. Uh, Crouch. Say to him, you know, I'll do the chatting Bob. on the field. <laughs> you don't tell me what to do. No shortage of experience there. Mandy wants to pick up from the base again. Fumbled it slightly this time, but still manages to cross the game line, working on the blind side, Brackenfell. Yet to take advantage of the possession and territory. In both of those fields, they have had the advantage. Jordan clears again. Mandy very heavily used early on here. Sizable number eight that he is. Jordan again, this time trying to spread it on Brackenfell. Smith slings it wide, and Titus almost drags that one in on his fingertips. But it has gone into touch, and it will be a line out to Tigerberg. No, it won't. We're playing an advantage for offsides. It will be a penalty to Brackenfell. What do you say, Gavin? Kickable position? You know, they've got Johan Mundy, he's 108 kilograms at number eight, a number eight on a day like today, a wet day, heavy field, and uh, a man who's got that sort of power, you'll see they'll be using him quite a lot during the course of this game. Again, a wise decision, it's a derby game, you know, it's open to any team to win it, despite what we've seen in history, so kicking at goal I think is a wise option, and Robin Smith has got a trustworthy boot too, to try and make sure that they get the three-pointer. Plenty of responsibility on this individual on screen this afternoon. And thus far, he really has been showing all of his skills. Raven Smith looks very sharp on the attack. Marquin Titus will have to be brought into play as well. Back, back, get back. Get you know, back. Paul, just uh, having a look at this too. You get know, you've back. got to have a player standing by to touch the, or hold that ball that it doesn't fall over in a wind like today. There's nobody nearby the kicker. And maybe he's confident that he's got it securely lodged on his team.
Smith puts it up, good strike. Over the post it goes. The first points of the derby go to Brackenbaum. He was in the first team last year, Raven Smith, one of the three players that was here in 2017 for Brackenbaum. Restart from Tigerberg. Very good kick into the wind as well. And charging back at them is the tireless Johan Mundy, who continues going after the initial hit. Jordan back to Smith. Smith, that kick is too flat and has been charged down. Kept in play casually so by Vihan Julis. Can Brackenfell get this ball back? Yes, they can. Men in motion. That's good to see. But Tigerberg had them lined up next to the rack there, driving Brackenfell backwards. Real contested rack time eventually though. A penalty comes away of Brackenfell and they have the chance to clear their lines. Good feet. Came up. That's your mark. With a wind like this, Gavin, there's almost no excuse to be trapped in your own 22 meter line, is there? No, but again it's down to execution. You've got to make sure that uh, you hold on to the ball, your passing is accurate too. And, you know, when you've got a trustworthy brute like Raven Smith, uh, he really can do what he needs to do there but I think Tigerberg have just got to try and absorb as much pressure as what they can they've given away a couple of penalties and this was just another one now with uh, unfortunately going off his feet there was uh, Dion Basson Captain Shaw Pretorius outstanding lineup considering the conditions fired it into the number two ball and they drive forward to Brackenfell this rolling more it's rolling mall is slightly upright Bentley does go to ground and Jordan clears to the impressive Smith hits a runner in the midfield it's Vihan Julies beating a defender and sending a looping pass out wide he finds a man it's Arno Volfart and Breckenfell are right back on the attack Smith clears from the base this time again it's Johan Mundy Mundy wrapped up by two players loses possession on the ground and Titus is coming in to involve himself in the play there was a slight knock on and we will have a scrum to the visitors Tiger Bay. you wouldn't say that it's a windy and a wet day today with the way that Brackenfield have played they've got a lot of possession to start with in this game and they've been very accurate that's the first real knock on from them but a lovely run here from Julie's look for the man lovely floated pass too and certainly the big pressures are coming from Brackenfell. There's no question about that. Mundy once again used as uh, the battering ram there in the midfield. But uh, that little knock on, sadly, will mean a scrum to Tigerberg. Tigerberg, they call the Tigers. Brackenfell, well, the Brackies, aren't they? <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Their motto is I hope for higher things at Brackenfell. While the Tigerberg, they have a simple motto, there is work. And that work is no doubt to be done. We've got an injury on the field. Is that Mundy, the hard-running Johan Mundy? He's really got through plenty of work in the first 9 minutes, 20 seconds. That is, what would you call that? That's where all the old schoolers are watching the game from. The old boys and the fathers and the parents and the mothers, brothers and sisters all coming down for Derby Day. Here is the head-to-head -head over the years. That 58 points to nil in 2017, a humbling loss away from home that Brackenfell delivered to Tigerberg and they're hoping to put their fourth win here this afternoon which would bring the record to six wins to four in favor of Tigerberg still there in the early running you see the Tigerberg had the run of things all too easy for them but Brackenfell have certainly come back into it Gavin before the match we were talking about even Etzebeth being a Tigerberg player and then when he arrived actually in grade eight to Tigerberg, he was 1.5 meters tall and he weighed just 56 kilograms. When he left this place, he weighed a cool 125. Just shows you how far you can come in a high school career. He didn't play A team until after under 16 as well. Well, I'd love to know what Joanna Augustus, what size he was when he was in grade eight, because uh, he's also a very big boy. He'll be playing his trade this afternoon for Western Province against Free State a little later at Newlands. But this is a Really sad situation here for Brackenfell. Just a tragedy. The school colors even on the strapping over that knee, which appears to be the problem. There may have been a problem coming into the match, considering that strapping just tragic for Johan Mundy, who was clearly up for this match. 
Yeah, on a day like today, he, he can be just such a big factor. But so far, if we look at the state of this match as well, at Brackenfell, they've got those three points from the penalty. They haven't managed to get over the line yet. And this is another mental thing, Paul, that's really important, you know. The one team's absorbing pressure and watching the clock uh, to, in the knowledge that they'll play with the win in the second half. The other is trying to get points. That scrum Angle. barely under control, and a penalty does come the way of Tigerberg. Sweet Angle. relief for the boys in green. They get the chance to kick for touch. It will be difficult to kick for touch on that side of the field, though. That's where the wind's blowing from. Yeah, again, very often, you know, the tap and go, just carry it up and set up the next phase of play. You've got to show some level of patience with that where you can. But if they're confident with their line-out, uh, Tigerberg, uh, which they weren't just now, you saw it went very skew, um, then, then it's a good option. But other than that, tap and go, use the power of your forwards where you can. This line out is scrappily won by Tigerberg, but one it is, and finally they get to the chance to run at the hosts today, Breckenfeld. Tandile Hoy waiting behind this rack. He will not be receiving the ball, though. The pick and go is from Raiden Phillips. Keeping it tight, Tigerberg, cherishing this possession, which they have not had any of, really, up until this point in the match. Breckenfeld challenging them at the breakdown. They seem to be keen on this one, and they do have a turnover ball. Bringing all the initiative to this match thus far, Breckenfeld, Justin Detroy on the run this time. And a penalty comes the way of Tigerberg, and the tap and go. Oh, it wasn't from the mark, and Chris and September will have to return. There's a good option, though, with uh, September, just the, the quick tap and go, put pressure on Brackenfell and hold on to the position where they can. I'm not sure that Tigerberg are that confident at forward against Brackenfell today. This Brackenfell pack really is a, a very, very useful one. That kick is nowhere close to the touchline. Chasing up fields with intensity is JP Matia putting in a hit, but here's Titus. Lightning quick Titus is. Space on the outside for Brackenfell. Trying to start a counter-attack, but a thumping tackle on the far side. Brings the ball back Tigerberg's way. In to receive Chris from September. And Tigerberg finally in the Breckenfell half, making their presence felt. And your big runners on offer, specifically Liam Tattersall in the five jersey, weighing in at 117 kilograms and 1.9 meters tall. 1.95 meters tall to be exact. Let me not take those five centimeters away from him. Sean Gordon will be going for that touchline again. Kicked well into the wind last time. This one will be a challenge again. It is loopy, it is flat, it is wrong-footed Titus, but it's still in the hands of Breckenfell, who seem keen to run this. No, they do turn to the boot, perhaps wisely so. End of end towards the touchline. What a kick that turns out to be, driving Tigerberg back into their own half. Yeah, percentage rugby is uh, always the important adage on a day like today, and certainly Breckenfell doing that rather well. We've seen a lot of penalties today, and, and it's often what you find on a wet and a windy day. A lot of penalties given, and the two smallest guys are at halfback on the field for Tigerberg today. They haven't managed to get the ball into touch when they needed to. Oh, winning that line out and losing control, Dion Basson, giving Brackenfell another chance and charging forward now is Dylan Fashir. Jordan things moving no space on that blind side not the best option perhaps and Vian Julies is bundled into touch rather easily again it will be Oakley Conyers for Tigerberg right now the numbers not working out for Tigerberg when it comes to the line out Brackenfell not buying any deception that Tigerberg would be heading towards the back of that line out Straight to the two ball. Penalty comes their way. Yet another penalty for Tigerberg. Really wrecking them up at this point. Tandila Hoy wants to get things moving, but we are called back by Mr. Kaplan. Yeah, it had to be taken on the 15 meter mark, which uh, it wasn't. So Hoy just getting his men going. And going they are now. Hoy marshalling the troops. They're going to have to run this ball into the significant wind. Use it to their advantage. Have to control possession, control the clock. So far, they've done well. 15 minutes gone and only three points against them. This could be great things for Tigerberg. Raiden Phillips met Outside. in the midfield. Another penalty against Breckenfeld. Yes, uh, just a little eager there from an offside position. They've given away the penalty. 
It's Hoy again, one-handed take from Phillips. More than willing to run into the contact is Raiden Phillips. Vian Mayer finally getting involved. Outside center, but over the ball of Breckenfell. Another turnover this time, Shaw Pretorius, their captain. Down the blind side, has he lost control? The answer is yes, but a penalty advantage. Plenty of penalties flying either way now. Yeah, there's very good power in this Brackenfeld pack, and, and it's showing. As you mentioned, they're the second turnover for them, and an important one. And the one thing that Raven Smith has done well, too, is that he's he's made the right choices when he's got a kick and when, he, when he's going to move the ball. And one of the key things, I think, too, is the accuracy of his kicking. He's made sure that he's got the ball into touch when it was needed. And there's the first steal that we saw from Brackenfeld. Charles Pretorius made the turnover winning possession back for Brackenfeld. Continuing to lead by just the three points at the front of the lineup, Dylan Fashir setting the rolling wall now. Can Tigerberg respond get out, get out. upright in their body positions as they do try? And a penalty. But this one is against Tigerberg again. Two in a row for them now. Each side really giving away plenty of penalties. Would appear Raven Smith is ready to seek the touchline again. No, he is not pointing to the posts. And perhaps the wind might support that kick. It's a tough decision to make, you know. Ultimately, the captain will make the call and, and suggest that he kicks. Because he is such an accurate kicker, you know, hopefully they'll get the three points. Um, that, that's needed. But I suppose at the end of the day, what was going through his mind too was, I think we're winning the forward battle. Let's kick it for the corner. But a line out's a, lot, a lottery on a date like today. So I'd rather take those three points. And once again, Tigerberg caught in an offside position. Gavin, it's often said that when you have the wind, you need to get over 20 point lead. Was it perhaps Brackenfell? Would they be thinking now they haven't scored enough points with all of the pressure that they've been exerting? I think uh, it might be going through their head, yes. Again, you know, your forward pack is so important on a day like today, you know. And if they can dominate that, even in the second half and they're playing into the wind, it's easier to carry the ball into the wind. But you know you're going to play a lot of rugby in your own half of the field. That kick is up, but it's been pushed to the side. The score lines remain as they are. Three points to nil. Tigerberg with the 22 meter drop out now. In a howling wind that is launched high. It will be difficult to take. It is superbly taken by the number seven, Sean Truter. And Breckenfeld keen to run again on the counter attack. Raven Smith stabbing this one through. It looks like it may be slightly long. No, it comes bouncing off the corner post and into touch. Surely, what a kick it has turned out to be. Raven Smith, tip your cap. Uh, controlling a game at half back and uh, or at fly half is just so important on a on a windy wet day and we can just see the quality of raven smith that was again taking the right option he's been thinking of what to do you know he's moved the ball a little bit but when he has kicked it's been accurate pressure on this lineup for tigerberg difficult to put into words what a feed this time around dion basson rising high oakley kanye is feeding had a couple of practice runs to get that right, and they certainly get it right at the most pivotal of times for this Tigerberg side, who continue to be stuck on their own try line. And playing into a hefty wind, it's going to be difficult to get it out of here. More call than it will be a scrum down to Brackenfell. Still just the three points on the board after 20 minutes of camping outside the Tigerberg half. Look at the hands in the pockets and the looks on the faces if you want to know exactly what this weather feels like. And the rain comes down again. As expected, straight down into the face of the Tigerberg High School boys. This is where Johan Mundy at uh, number eight would have been most useful too. Sadly, he's off the field, and that uh, number seven jersey is uh, now at number eight. is belonging to Sean Truter. But the carrying of the ball is, is so important on a day like today, and you can pick up from the back of a scrum and make the yardage that you're looking for and uh, we could well see the first try of the match hefty individual himself sean truter at 100 kilograms to mondays 108. Five. Set. Oh. 
They also have Markun Titus in position behind the fly-off, looking to make a run. What do they choose? Breckenfeld clear. Jordan. It is Titus that they seek. Titus throws the dummy, trying to slice through a gap. Well tackled, though, by Vian Mayer. Working the blind again. Breckenfell have the numbers over the line. Vian Julies. Try award it to Breckenfell. They break the duck. It's eight points to nil with the kick to come. Well, some brilliant play, and, and part of that was the clean out at the ruck that really opened up the space for Brackenfell to allow Julies to get in in the corner. They cleaned that ruck so quickly and efficiently. And uh, right on the spot there, Hannah Jordan also doing a really good job in making sure that that ball went through the hands all the way. And a good finish that from Julies with not a lot of room to work in. Now, if you want to see a small miracle, you might witness one now if this kick goes over. Because this is a, a really tough one. Speaking in terms of physics, I'm not even sure how you would make it happen. Well, the wind is blowing straight towards the corner in which the try was scored, to be as simple as possible. And Paul, there's nobody standing by to hold that ball if it just manages to flip off that tee. There should always be a player nearby. With some wobble, the ball holds on the tee, looking for the reverse swing and enjoying every moment of it was Raven Smith. There was absolutely no delay with this ball as it moved through. There was the ruck basically quickly cleaned out. And sorry, that was the try that was scored, but the ruck that was cleaned out before that just kept the momentum going for Brackenfell. On defense and attack, Breckenfeld have been winning the breakdown battle, making turnovers when defending and clearing out quickly on the attack. That is the first try that they have to the name. Eight points to nil their lead. Tigerberg have a chance off that kickoff to start moving forward now. Chadjan Borta. Oh, he clears. Our first opportunity really to see Tigerberg with a sustained attack and Byron Stradom goes to ground. Diminutive winger as he is, Hoi to the open again had a man in motion JP Matia Hoy pointing digging desperate for quick ball for Tigerberg dummy from Sean Gordon the Breckenfell defensive line holds strong however Tigerberg continue to break the game line regularly that one is slightly slowed down and charging onto it is John Henry Pinar and hard tackle just wait it seems to be a better one Penalty around every corner for both of these sides. The penalty there or there? This one? <laughs> Jonathan says, I'll give you the better one. He, he has to make the offer. Penalty there or penalty here. Strong. They've got the one that's uh, pretty much straight up front. Strong. Interesting decision. The penalty was for offside. Call for a scrum. They've chosen a scrum. Wow. That's a mark. Thank you. Well, I suppose, given the options they have, are kicking into the wind into that corner. Or kicking for posts, which would be slightly risky. Yeah, I think both of those are options are risky. You're quite right. And, you know, it is close to midfield, so that's a great uh, field position for a scrum. But they've just got to make sure that they, they get good front football from the scrum and open up the opportunities for their very, very efficient yeah. wingers who've hardly seen the ball in this game thus far. Well, the supporters of both of these schools are full of spirits. And that was certainly on display during this week with the old boys and old girls playing various sports against each other. Such a great spirit from people currently at the school and after leaving the school, which these derby days really generate. You know what I really found quite interesting as well is uh, yeah, there's the mascot. <laughs> and uh, he looks quite, uh, quite relaxed, doesn't he? Old Jock of the Bushveld. I think they should get him a second jacket, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Brackenfell, uh, very interesting just reading who the heroes are of the, the players on the field today. And quite often, Quacker Smith's name was mentioned, which I think is a great positive for and a victory for the small man, one could say. Not that he's that small, but, you know, by today's standards. And uh, so good to see what the aspirations are of these young men, all of them with a great desire, of course, to play rugby at a higher level. And, uh, you know, that's where I think people like... Uh, Ivan Itzabeth and Joanna Augustus really provide uh, 
you know, the opportunity maybe with their successes for these young men to say, well, you know, we might not be at fashionable schools as they defined, but yet we've got the opportunity to of potentially playing at a higher level. Crouch. Coming off the field for Tigerberg, I believe it's John Henry Pienaar, their inside centre. Another disappointing end to a day for another one of these Derby players breaking open side now, Breckenfell. That was Hanno Jordan, Hanno Jordan, who has been so impressive in the 9 jersey today. He says he plays in the 10 and the 15 jersey as well. Breckenfell running this from deep, Charles Pretorius getting the footwork going. Turning to the boot now with Raven Smith. Looking for green grass again, and he does find it, but it's covered by Chris in September. Decision time for September, surely not. He's taking on a number of Breckenfell players. And they are there to clear out the breakdown, Tigerberg. That was risky from September, but it has paid off. And if Tigerberg can control possession for the final nine minutes of this half, they can be very happy with the points tally, which they have held Breckenfell down to in the first half. But such a strong win behind Breckenfell's back. Clearing from the base is Bre Byron Stradle. In the back line is Tandile Hoi. Scrum off for Tigerberg, and they've gobbled it now. Markin Titus capitalizing on the opportunity. Scramble defense from Tigerberg ensures it does not escalate beyond that, though. Now the penalty. This one to Breckenfell. Again in kickable range. They'll be scratching their heads as to what the option is here. Yeah, you know, Edge of going off his feet there. You know, that's another thing on a, a wet field is uh, you got to make sure that you do stay on your feet as much as you can. It's another very, very good kick there as well. Just some more pressure on uh, this Tigerberg team who really just have to do what they can to keep the scoreline down by half time. I think that Henry Koch, their coach, will be talking to them at half time, asking more of these pack of forwards in the second half. The weather has not dampened the spirits. How many? Here in the northern suburbs of the Cape Town area, rugby continues to be extremely popular. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We have a shoelace this time, thankfully not another injury. This is the final game of the season for both of these schools. A day of such pride for all these young gentlemen who get to take to the field. The first time on your World of Champions for both of these schools and for this derby. What a day for both teams. It's coming out, out, stay out. That line out works well for Breckenfeld. This is a big opportunity for the boys in the yellow and the blue and the red. Can they consolidate here and drive Tigerberg backwards? Both party positions of the teams, not ideal, slightly upright. And as a result, that ball flakes into nothingness. Trying to work the open side now. Here's Raven Smith. The skip pass, and that's the Diedrichs. Diedrichs isolated, and Tigerberg piling in over that ball, particularly JP Matia. Not supporting his own body weight at the end of that. But all is well that ends well, and Hoy is driving his way forward. Is he held up off the ground, though? Yes, he is. More calls, but Tigerberg still making meters. And they do manage to free the ball. It will be Tigerberg possession. As I say that, it will not. Scrap now to Breckenfell. What an enormous opportunity this is, dead center of the field. We are approaching five minutes remaining in the first half. Just eight points they've gained from their dominance. How can they convert? We saw again there a statistic on which uh, suggests that nine tackles have been missed by Tigerberg in this game. And that's another crucial element on a wet and windy day, that you make those first-time tackles, get the man to ground so you can apply pressure on the ball that's on the ground. Just don't go outside him, please. Don't go outside and hit the outside shoulder. The key question is whether Brackenfell will be comfortable with that 8 0 lead. Bear in mind it's 35 minutes each way, running time at schoolboy level. So not a lot of time left in this half. Tigerberg moving forward at scrum time, cannot secure a tight head though. Do wheel the scrum away from the preferred position for Brackenfell, who still tried to work that open side. He wasn't offside. Throwing it backwards, J. Lee Andrus. But it is retained by Breckenfell this time, desperately trying to keep the ball in field as Bian Julies, who again goes into touch far too easily. I think that Tigerberg have done very well in managing this game so far, Gavin. Eight points is not too bad considering this win. They might well be thinking that themselves, and, and so they should, I think. You know, they've spent a lot of time in their own half of the field. The pressure's been there. Yes, they've given away a lot of penalties, but only two of them have really been kickable. So uh, they might feel confident about the second half. The line-out is also coming along, although it is dodgy every time, all due to this wind. Dion Basson carrying it in for Tigerberg. That's their own 10-meter line. 
keep their hands on the ball. Man. Stemming carrying it in that time, but it's been turned again for Brackenfell. Diving on the ball, securing possession. Absolutely crucial at this point. This is the captain, Charles Vittorius. He's given it off to Jamie Linus, tackled into touch again. Brackenfell flirting with the touch line far too often. And again, it will be a line out to Tigerberg. Oh, look at those set pieces uh, turnovers, you know that. Uh, and there's been a, a few more as well that are not set pieces that from broken play. And Brackenfell have really, I think, put pressure on Tigerberg, particularly that back and forwards of theirs. Swinging away after going straight down the line, and you can see referee Jonathan Kaplan there understanding the conditions is no longer blowing those as being throws which are not straight. It started straight, therefore it is straight. And Brackenfell had their hands on the ball now. Oh no, Volpart driving forward. Raymond Smith, he's got some space to work with the numbers. Well defended by Tigerberg, but can they stop the flow of Brackenfell attack? Dylan Fouchier carrying it forward. Jordan Smith spreading it now to the open side. Diedrichs. Sends it further, Jane Lee Andreas. Andreas driving for the line. Andreas over. Hold up. Hold that up, five meter. Held up is the call from Jonathan Kaplan, and Breckenfell are thwarted once again. Less than three minutes to play in the first well, half now. They've got to be getting desperate. That's that's tantamount to match-winning defence. Absolutely outstanding play. Yeah, just have a look at this then. Gordon was involved. They kept that ball up off the ground. Three Tigerberg players around the ball carrier. An excellent play from them. That saved them seven points. It might be temporarily, who knows? Excellent defensive work by the men in green and gold. Crouch. Bind. Set. Brackenfell have been beset by injuries this year. Their coach tells me that they've used 32 players, that coach being Jan Lopesher. But they are back on form now, and this is Raven Smith. Spreading the ball wide is Wolfhardt. No space on the outside for Judy's. That's been the story all day for the right winger. Turnover by Tigerberg. They have a chance on the blind here. Cover defense is punishing. Oh, it is punishing. What a hit into touch there. Oh, this is some jackal. If we see the tail end of this, and when you put that sort of kick in here, you're standing on one foot, you're a real target, aren't you? No hands! That was on the blind side here, Tigerberg. After catching Brackenfell slightly off guard, that pass is not going to do anybody any favours. Whoa, that piece of break from Sean Gordon is magical. Dummying the kick and going to the outside. Tigerberg accelerating onto it here, had to give the pass! The try was on the outside for Tigerberg, but they retain possession, and it's Byron straight on now. Dancing feet over there on the far side of the field for Tigerberg and it's Hoy in the fly half position through the hands of Stemmet. Breckenfell all of a sudden desperately defending their own line just after they thought they were going to score a try. Here's the line out. Artist Oakley Conyers and it's De Mayer on the outside. De Mayer sends it back for Hoy. Hoy cannot get control. Is that going to be a penalty try? Let's take a listen to Jonathan Kaplan. What exactly has happened here? Not releasing the tackle. That's going to be a penalty try. Yeah, there was no release on the tackle. And uh, that's considered negative play. So uh, this is a huge boon that one's got to say for Tigerberg. Right under the post. There's no need for the conversion. They just carry on and uh, they're back in this game. They certainly are. What a fascinating turn of events here. A half that was going all the way of Brackenfell. However, they didn't get enough points for the pressure that they'd been exerting, we feel. And in the end, it's proven to be just that way as Tigerberg broke all the way upfield, eventually getting themselves a penalty try. And now there's one point between the two sides. Penalty try, you understand? Thank you. Tigerberg will be full of confidence heading into the second half if there's just one point between them. And they have this strong win behind their backs. Raven Smith launches what should be the final restart of the half. Will Tigerberg kick the touch? Surely they will. 
taking chances, but eventually finding a safe touch. And that is how the half should end, but it appears that our clock is slightly ahead of that of Jonathan Kaplan. There is the player that has been sanctioned with the yellow card, Sean Thruta. I think 10 minutes of a 35-minute half or a 70-minute match is actually quite a lot too. And Brackenfell, without uh, a very, very effective man now who's uh, in the naughty chair. They've lost two of their starting loose ones now, one to injury. One briefly to a yellow card. Edge of the mayor reaching up and the fingertips turn that back. Charging forward is open. As time continue to grow into this match now, the confidence clearly coursing through their veins at this point. Byron Stradom sends it open. The control from Raiden Phillips again, the willing ball runner of the lads in green and gold. Wide from Vian Mayer, numbers on the outside. This is Hoi. Hoi to ground, picks it up off the ground again, and Hoi fighting for each and every inch. Still going forward is Hoi. Held up off the ground now, a more surely yes, and Breckenfeld will cherish this. Being a man down, they are all of a sudden desperately defending their own line. Scrum called, it will be to Breckenfeld, but will that be the halftime whistle? Schoolboy rugby, 35 minutes a half. According to us, we've clocked on to 37 now, but there have been two significant injuries. We should keep that in mind. So there may be some discrepancies between our clock and that of the referee. What is certain is this is turning into a nail-biter of a derby. Brackenfell will be completely shocked that they lead by only one point after displaying complete dominance. Especially so their fly-off Raven Smith. And their scrum's going to be under pressure here with just... Uh, with... Uh, Two of the loose forwards that are not part of it. Sorry, just break up. Number eight, you must go. Astute point, Mr. Carly. Jonathan Kaplan there saying that number eight Sorry, must go guys. because at schoolboy level you have to have even numbers yeah. at the scrum. So if you get somebody sent off with the yellow card, the opposition team needs to take one player out of the scrum. However, of course, that means that back line has that much more potency. Shoulder out and you hit straight. Shoulder out. Crouch. Bind. Set. Six, six. Most important scrum of the half for Brackenfeld, and it does come back their way. Jordan gets it away to Ravensmith. We clearly had the information that would be the final play of the half, and that is the final play of the half, wrapped up here at halftime between Brackenfeld and Tigerberg. This young derby, the tenth playing thereof. Six wins to Tigerberg and three to Brackenfell. Right now, Brackenfell narrowly leading at home by one try each. One point. It's eight points to seven. Brackenfell over Tigerberg. Can he stay on his feet? One try. Terrific tackling, Nick. What a comeback from the home side. That's some lovely step in here. Excellent break from the centre. Beautiful. Beautiful. 